In this addendum, we're going to create a twist table using more solid modeling operations. This time, instead of going through each document setting, we'll just use the attached exercise file. Download or copy this file to your desktop. In Vectorworks, go to File, Open. Then, select the exercise file from your desktop and click the Open button. You should notice the page boundary orientation is now set to landscape and the units are millimeters. Now that we have the same starting point, double click the rectangle tool in the basic palette. This will open the create object dialog box. In the width field, input a value of 1000 millimeters and do the same for the height field. Also, choose the center mark on the box position matrix. We want this rectangle to be placed at the center of the drawing area, so uncheck the option Position at Next Click. Now we can input 0 in the X and Y fields to center this rectangle. To create the rectangle, click OK. Next, in the Snapping Palette, double click the category Snap to Distance and verify that the Snap By option is set to 25%. This means that we'll receive snap points at 25% of the total length of an object on a straight or curved line, as well as polygon edges, wall edges, and other linear objects. Also, select the Grid category and verify the options Show Grid and Show 3D Z-Axis are checked, then click OK. If you move your cursor to the top right corner of the rectangle, you'll be able to see the distance snap points. We're going to use this rectangle, along with the distance snapping, to create the legs for the twist table. To begin, click the Fit to Object button in the view bar so that you have a good view of the rectangle. Then, select the 3D Locus tool in the 3D Modeling tool set. Now, hover your cursor over the top left corner of the rectangle. You should see that there is a distance snapping point just to the right of this corner. When you move your cursor to this point, the cursor cue along line should be displayed. Click this snap point to place the 3D locus point. Also, click the bottom left corner of the rectangle to place another 3D locus point. Additionally, with this newly created 3D locus point still selected, set the Z field in the object info palette to 500 and press enter to lock in the value. Next, use the flyover tool to get a side view of those two locus points. Notice the recently created locus point sits 500 millimeters above the layer plane. Let's connect these two locus points using the NURBS curve tool in the 3D modeling tool set. Once you have the tool activated, click one of the 3D locus points. Then, double click the other to create the NURBS. Next, double click the circle tool in the basic palette. When the Create Object dialog box appears, set the Diameter field to 12 and click OK to create the circle. Now, press the X key on your keyboard to switch to the Selection tool. Hold the Shift key and click the previously drawn NURBS curve. You should now have both the NURBS curve and the circle selected. Then, go to Model, Extrude Along Path. Make sure the NURBS curve is highlighted as the path object and click OK to create the extrude along path. This will serve as one of the legs for our twist table. Let's create the rest of the legs by going to Edit, Duplicate Array. Choose Circular Array from the Shape drop-down menu. Then, set the Number of Duplicates field to 11. Since we want the legs to be created evenly in a circle, Set the Angle Between Duplicates field to 360 divided by 12. This will create the appropriate angle for 12 objects evenly spaced in a complete circle. Also, make sure the Circle Center Point X and Y fields are both set to 0. Additionally, choose Use Duplication Angle from the Rotate Duplicates section. Then, Check the options Retain and Leave Selected in the Original Object section. Now, click OK to create the Duplicate Extrude Along Path objects. The Object Info Palette 
should now show 12 extrude along path objects are selected. So that we can treat all of these objects as one, go to Model, Add Solids to create one large solid addition from the 12 extrude along path objects. Notice the Object Info palette now shows Solid Addition. At the moment, we've created all the table legs. However, all of the legs are still straight. To make a slight curve in these legs, select the 3D Locus tool from the 3D Modeling tool set again. Then, click at the center of the layer plane, where the three axis lines meet. After placing the Locus point, go to the Object Info palette and change the Z height for this Locus to 500 millimeters. Press Enter on your keyboard to lock in the value. Now, we'll use the Twist tool in the 3D Modeling tool set to add the curve to the table legs. Activate the Twist tool. Make sure the first mode, Solid Mode, is selected in the toolbar. Next, you must select the solid object to be twisted, which in this case is the Solid Edition. Click the Solid Edition once. Now, we must choose a fixed point to twist the object around, which is the 3D Locus point we just created. Click the Locus point once as well. Now, we need to set the reference line. To do this, move your cursor to the right until you snap to the green Y axis. When you see the cursor cue Y and the working plane angle field in the floating data bar read negative 90 degrees, click to set the reference line. We can now begin twisting the object. If you move your cursor, you should see a preview for the resulting twist. Since these are table legs, we do not want too drastic of a curve, so press the Tab key to enter the twist angle in the floating data bar. Input a value of negative 15 degrees and press Enter to lock in that value. Now, click once more to complete the twist. There. Now, take a moment with the Flyover tool to see how the solid addition has been twisted. Once you're done, return to a top plan view. The legs of the table are complete. Next, we need to create the tabletop. To do this, select the Circle tool from the basic palette. Also, select the third mode in the toolbar, circle by three points mode. To create the circle, click these three endpoints. Don't forget, you can use the snap loop by pressing the Z key to get a closer look as necessary. We also need to create a smaller circle. So, double click the circle tool to access the create object dialog box. Change the diameter field to 25 millimeters then click OK to create the circle, which should be placed at the center of the drawing. Now, switch to the Selection tool, hold the Shift key, and select the large circle. You should now have both circles selected. Next, go to Model, Extrude Along Path. Make sure the larger circle is highlighted as the path object, and click OK to create the Extrude Along Path object. Currently, this object is sitting at zero on the layer, but it needs to be elevated 500 millimeters to the top of the table legs. So, in the Object Info palette, set the Z field to 500 and press Enter. Okay, now let's switch to Front View. You can see the extrude along path we've just created meets the legs of the table and will serve as the railing for the glass tabletop. Let's also create the railing around the middle of the table legs. First. Using the Selection tool, click the green Y-axis line. You should notice there are now additional selection handles available on the working plane. This will allow us to move and rotate the working plane. Click the center point of the working plane and move it upward while holding the Shift key. When the length field in the floating data bar is around 220 millimeters, click again to complete the move. Next, switch to a top view. Then, activate the Circle tool and click these three points. Again, don't forget, you can use the Snap Loop as necessary here. After completing the circle, double-click the Circle tool in the Basic Palette. Change the Diameter field to 12 and click OK. Now, 
switch to the selection tool. Hold the shift key and select the larger circle. So both circles are now highlighted. Then go to Model, Extrude Along Path. Again, be sure that the larger circle is highlighted as the path and click OK to create the extrude along path. The railings are done. Now we just need to create the glass surface for the top of the table. Once again, select the circle tool and click these three points to create the circle. Just as we did previously, press the Z key to use the snap loop to get a closer look at the points. Then go to Model, Extrude. In the Create Extrude dialog box, set the extrusion field to 6 and click OK to create the extrude. The glass surface needs to sit at the top of the table, so set the bottom Z field in the Object Info Palette to 500 and press Enter. Now use the Flyover tool to take a look at this table in 3D. The extrude should still be selected, but if it's not, select it and go to the Render tab in the Object Info Palette. Then select Glass Clear from the Texture drop-down menu. Now switch to the Selection tool, then go through and delete any extraneous objects like the rectangle on the ground plane and the two locus points. Remember, if you're unable to select an object because it shares an edge with another object, hover your cursor over that object, hold the J key, and click. Then select your desired object from the list. The table is complete. So let's render in OpenGL or Final Quality RenderWorks to see the final results. Last, let's create a few viewports to present this twist table. Go to the View menu and select Create Viewport. In the Create Viewport dialog box, set the layer scale to 1 to 20. Also, select New Sheet Layer from the Create On Layer drop-down menu. In the next dialog box, leave all settings at their default and click OK twice to create the viewport. In the Object Info Palette, switch back to the Shape tab. Notice the View drop-down menu is set to Custom. This is because the viewport was created using the last view from the design layer, which was created using the Flyover tool. Next, we'll create two more viewports displaying different views of the table. With the Selection tool, hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows and click and drag the current viewport toward the top left corner of the drawing area. Notice the small plus sign beside the cursor, which indicates a duplicate will be created. Release the mouse click to create the duplicate. Also, change the View drop-down menu to Top Plan in the Object Info Palette. Additionally, reposition the viewport in the center of the page toward the right of the page. We need to create one more viewport. Again, Hold the Option key, or the Alt key, and click and drag from the last created viewport downward. Release your mouse click when you're satisfied with the viewport's placement to create the duplicate. This time, in the Object Info Palette, change the View drop-down menu to Front and choose Hidden Line from the Background Render drop-down menu. Select the two viewports with the red striped borders, which indicates they need to be updated. Then click the Update button in the Object Info Palette and your twist table is complete.